Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. So today is our lecture uh, 28 and in this lecture we will inshallah start a new chapter uh, that is chapter 5. It's the multiple random variables. So far we have seen a random a single random variable and we discussed about how we can define their CDF, PDF uh, in case of their, their continuous and PMF in case of their uh, uh, discrete random variables but for now we will uh, we will see that uh, sometimes it happens that uh, we uh, we uh, we have more than one random variables that are uh, somehow interconnected with each other uh, just like uh, in an example uh, that uh, if we receive a signal if we uh, just like uh, receive a signal at uh, receive a signal at antenna at somewhere or maybe on our phone so what happens actually is that uh, we we do not exactly get what the data has been transmitted by the uh, transmitter so instead that uh, uh, we receive the signal say we receive the signal uh, y and x was transmitted so this is the ideal condition if you receive y and x was transmitted but what happens we have certain noise that's been included in it so this uh, noise uh, uh, noise could be anything means if we are say measuring a voltage with the voltmeter so the if the exact we are not getting exact voltage it means that uh, the instrument is giving me some measurement error so that would be the this set so it could be anything so this is just a one very basic simple example so to work with the multiple random variables uh, we start with the joint cumulative distribution function so we start with the joint uh, distribution sorry cumulative distribution cumulative distribution function so the joint CDF is defined as the with the same basic definition of uh, uh, fx but now instead of having one subscript we have xy x comma y so that would be equal to probability of x is less than equal to x and y is less than equal to y so this may uh, this uh, this simply means that uh, yeah, if we if we look at, uh, at this function at this equation what we have written so we have to look for uh, the probability uh, for finding certain event in the, in two dimension and in two dimension obviously we know that uh, we have a surface just like in the first one, one dimension means fx of x it was just a single line now we have if we just look at pictorially so it will look like if we have x on this axis and y on this axis so if we want to find this uh, cdf so that would be uh, say that at this point x comma y so it simply means that probability x is less than x so it means that at this point and less than all the points here up to minus infinity and similarly uh, y is less than y so this is y so all the values below here so all this region throughout up to minus infinity up to here minus infinity and up to here minus infinity so we uh, on uh, so this will give me the, uh, the this will give me the uh, cdf of x and y but because I've, as I've said that this is uh, the basic definition, so if we if we want to uh, f say that uh, what what could be the uh, f uh, what could be the f x of uh, x, so that is quite simple as we know by our definition p 
x is less than or equal to x so which is means that uh, this is equal to uh, probability of if you want to write it in terms of joint uh, random uh, uh, joint cumulative distribution function so that will be x less than or equal to x now what about the y so y could have any value y could have any value less than infinity so y could have any value because from minus infinity to infinity we know that uh, it is 1 so we can say that uh, if uh, uh, so it means simply means that limit uh, y tends to infinity f x y which is joint come cdf so that would be simply f x y x comma infinity similarly we can say that f y of y to define the basic definition which is probability of y is less than or equal to y so in this means that it, in this case that x could have any value x could have any value that is uh, say uh, <coughs> that could be have less than infinity and y would be less than or equal to y so that is the same as limit x goes to infinity f x y x comma y which is equal to f x y infinity comma y so uh, there are some uh, basic properties of the uh, joint CDF so which are described here as uh, theorem 5.1 so it says that uh, uh, for any pair of for any pair of random variables x y The first property says that the joint CDF will be strictly between 0 and 1. And the joint CDF, if you take both at plus infinity, that would be 1. C, it says that fx of x is simply f x y x and for y it's infinity f y of y <coughs> is equal to f x y infinity y similarly If we move towards the negative infinity, we will see that we will get nothing but the zero probability. Similarly, fxy minus infinity y, so similarly it would also be zero. And the last one it says that if If x is less than or equal to x1 and y is less than or equal to y1, then f x y x y will be less than or equal to f x y x1 y1. So all these properties are almost uh, uh, very clear from the uh, definition also. So, and from what we have studied for the uh, CDF for the single uh, or for the single random variable. So, uh, as we can see that the definition of uh, this uh, joint CDF is quite simple, but uh, most of the time we don't work with the CDF uh, joint CDF. So instead, it is. Uh, uh, easy to work with the probability mass function when the random variables are discrete or uh, with the probability density function if they are continuous so let's uh, take an example to understand this thing 
so I will copy it from the book so it says that example 5.2 it says that X years is the age of children entering first grade in school Y years is the age of children entering second grade the joint CDF of X and Y is this is given as if age is less than 5 and age is less than 6 so they cannot enter uh, in the uh, in the school there so this is for the first grade first grade of, of first and this is a uh, second grade but we can see that x minus 5 y minus 6 so they can if the age is between 5 and 6 and they can enter uh, the school in first grade if the age is between 6 and 7 so they can enter in the second grade so so y minus 6 it will be uh, this greater than x is greater than or equal to 6 or y is between 6 and 7 so this is given so now it says that find the fx of x and fy of y so that is quite uh, simple straightforward so what we need to do is fx of x we know by definition is fxy uh, x comma infinity so we'll take any values of the uh, uh, y's so that can be uh, at infinity so or they could be any values so we don't bother about actually so what the y's could have the values what the y could have the values so if you just look at this uh, cdf joint cdf so we can say that fx of x equal to simply uh, 0 for because it is for grade 1 so s is less than equal to 5 and uh, uh, it would be x minus y if x minus x minus 5 for x is between 6 and greater than 5 then obviously uh, we can see that uh, it is uh, it would be then 1 uh, for uh, x is x is greater than or equal to 5 uh, sorry x is greater than or equal to 6 sorry 6 so this is the CDF uh, uh, this is the CDF of x similarly we can uh, write down the CDF of CDF of sorry y so that would be 0 for uh, y is less than 6 and uh, y minus 6 because x could have any value so that would be between 7 and greater than 6 and 1 for y is greater than or equal to 7 so so here we can see that uh, we have uh, uh, three different formulas uh, and we have to define six different regions in the x y plane uh, to uh, uh, and the three different formulas to express the probability model of this joint CDF. So uh, uh, there means uh, if uh, we can uh, see more complexities uh, in the joint CDF, but uh, if we have the express the joint PDF uh, that an outcome is in a rectangle in the x y plane, so that uh, that can be uh, written as. Uh, theorem 5.2 and uh, it says that uh, the probability uh, the probability that an outcome is in a rectangle in the xy plane in terms of in terms of the joint in terms of the joint CDF so that uh, that can be written as uh, probability x1 is uh, between x is between x1 and x2 
and y is between y2 and y1. So that is similar to finding the CDFs, joint CDF at each corner of the at each corner of the rectangle. minus fxy x1y2 plus fxy x1y1 so this is a rectangle and we have to uh, find the cdf uh, at every corner of the rectangle so uh, let's uh, look at one more example to elaborate these uh, findings So I will copy this example from the book. So uh, it is a quiz 5.1. So it says that uh, express the following extreme values of the joint CDF uh, uh, as numbers in terms of the CDFs fx of x and fy of y. So uh, we can see that uh, uh, for this uh, what we have seen in the theorem. So we can uh, find out easily. So it simply means that we have to find out the probability of x is less than or equal to minus infinity, y is less than or equal to 2, which is uh, equal to probability of x is less than or equal to minus infinity. And we know that uh, at minus infinity, it is defined as 0. So x cannot take any value, which is minus infinity. So we know that x, y, infinity, infinity means that uh, we are at the, uh, we are in finding the probability of the uh, entire region. So that would be simply probability of x is less than or equal to infinity and y is less than or equal to infinity. And that is, we know by theorem 5.1, it is 1. Similarly, uh, this is, uh, as we know that uh, uh, this is uh, f, x of i, uh, infinity, y. So it means that uh, x could have any value, uh, while y will be uh, in the defined range. x is less than or equal to infinity, and uh, y is less than or equal to y. So which is equal to probability of y is less than or equal to y, which is equal to f y of y. Similarly, uh, so this last one will be x is less than or equal to infinity, and y is less than or equal to minus infinity. And that is obviously uh, we are working on minus infinity. So it means that uh, that should be zero. So the, just in a layman language, you must remember that if we have any limit which is uh, reaching minus infinity, so the probability of that function would be zero. Okay, let's uh, now see the joint uh, probability mass function. So joint uh, probability mass function. So for discrete random variables, uh, the, uh, uh, the joint PMF of uh, random variables is defined as PXY is uh, equal to probability x equal to x and y is equal to y. So it means that uh, we have to, uh, we have, it is uh, actually defined at all those points where x and uh, y meets the requirement and gives uh, 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 the points where those have the uh, probabilities. So similarly, the range of this uh, uh, random uh, uh, joint uh, random uh, joint random variable uh, will be the pairs of uh, the pair values of uh, x and y, p, x, y, x comma y greater than 0. So, <coughs> so remember that uh, remember that this x equal to x and y is equal to y is an event is an event is an event in an experiment. So to understand this, <coughs> let's uh, solve this example. Uh, so let's uh, get it from the book. 
so it says that uh, two uh, test two integrated circuits one after the other on each test the possible outcomes are accept or reject assume that all circuits are acceptable with probability 0.9 and that the outcomes of successive tests are independent so we have to we have to test two ICs which are independent of each other so the each IC could be either accept or reject and the probability of being accept is uh, 0.9 and uh, reject is obviously uh, 0.1. So count the number of acceptable circuits X and count the number of successful tests Y before you observe the first reject. If both tests are successful, let Y is equal to 2. Draw a tree diagram for the experiment. Find the joint PMF PXY comma uh, into XY. So uh, this is uh, quite straightforward. So the street diagram will start with the same uh, from the root. And uh, for the <coughs> first test, we say it could be accept with the probability of 0.9 and it could be a reject with probability of 0.1. Similarly, the second test, if it is accepted so that the other one could be accepted with probability of 0 0.1, 0.9, and rejection is again uh, 0.1 even if it is rejected the second can be accepted with probability 0.9 and this would be 0.1 so this is the straightforward as we have seen so we can see that this would be a a this would be a reject first acceptance to uh, second rejected first rejected second accepted first rejected second rejected so it means that uh, if y, y is equal to 2 means uh, now the, just remember that x is the number of circuits acceptable circuits and y is the number of successful tests so successful tests means both are acceptable and to success uh, as uh, uh, acceptable circuits are x so it means that if both are acceptable so again x equal to say 2 <coughs> so here we say that x equal to 2 y is equal to And here it would be uh, x equal to 1 because uh, one, uh, one of the IC was accepted and one of the circuit, one of the experiment uh, was uh, successful or the test was successful. Here again x equal to 1 and y is equal to So the, why is the uh, number of uh, successful tests before we observe the first reject? So we have rejected, uh, we have observed the first rejected. So it means that y would be 0 then. So here again, uh, x is uh, 0 because we have not accepted, uh, we don't have any accepted reject uh, circuit and uh, uh, y is uh, the first, uh, the, uh, y is the uh, successful test before the first reject. So it is 0. So here we can see that their probabilities uh, I, will, I can write down here. So it would be 0 0.9 into 0 0.9, 0 0.81, 0 0.9 into 0 0.1, 0 0.09. Similarly here, 0 0.1 into 0 0.9, uh, it would be 0 0.09, and it would be 0 0.1 into 0 0.1, 0 0.01. So probability of means uh, acceptance. Both circuits are accepted is 0 0.81. Both are rejected. 0 uh, uh, 0 0.09, one, one is accepted, one is rejected, 0 0.09, and both are rejected is 0 0.01. Now, <coughs> we can write uh, down their uh, joint uh, PMF. So, first we write down in the form of table. So, here we can take uh, either Y. 1 and similarly here we can take x so from this uh, uh, from this tree diagram we can see that when x equal to 2 y is equal to 2 it is 0 0.81 so x equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 this is here 
zero point eight one. Similarly, when x is equal to one, y is equal to one, it is point zero nine. X equal to one, y is equal to one point zero nine, and x equal to zero, y is equal to zero, it is zero point zero one. And the last one is when uh, x is equal to uh, x equal to one and y is equal to zero. X equal to one, y is equal to zero. This is here zero point zero nine. So what about the rest of the values? So it will be zero. It will be zero on the other values. Zero, 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 and zero here. So now we can. Uh, uh, we can write it in list form x y so it is 0 0.0.81 for x equal to 2 y is equal to 2 0 0.09 for x equal to 1 y is equal to 1 0 0.09 for x equal to 1 y is equal to 0 and 0 0.01 for x equal to 0 y is equal to 0 and 0 otherwise similarly we can plot it so uh, instead of having uh, one axis here we will have the x and y and what about the uh, their probabilities that i will uh, show you how we can plot them so say it is zero i uh, don't put zero here so zero for x and y both zero one two one so the probabilities are defined at uh, x equal to 2, y is equal to 2. So we will put the dot here first. And then the probability is defined at uh, x equal to 1, y is equal to 1. Then the probability is defined at x equal to 0, y is equal to 0 here. And then another x equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And now the probabilities will be written uh, with them. Uh, if it is a 3D graph, so we can see the lines in it. But uh, here we can just uh, uh, put the values here 0 0.81 and 0 0.09 and 0 0.01, 0 0.09. So that's, that's how we can find out the, uh, we can plot them. Okay, now remember that uh, the probabilities will always be add up to 1. So uh, the axioms of probability that was the second axiom of probability must also be fulfilled. So simply here it would be 0 0.10, 0 0.09, 0 0.81, here it would be 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.18, yes, and 0 0.81. So obviously if you just add them, so it will be summation to 1. So that can be written as uh, that can uh, be written as uh, the summation of uh, x that belongs to range of x and summation y that belongs to range of y uh, p x y x comma y that is one. So uh, so there is another theorem which says that. Uh, it is uh, theorem 5.3 and it says that uh, for discrete random variables and any set B in the XY plane the probability of the event x y that belongs to that belongs to b is probability of b which is 
summation of all the values of x, y that belongs to B, their summation. So uh, let's look at an example to understand this uh, theorem. Uh, let's uh, paste it here. Oh, sorry. So it says that continuing the example, uh, previous example 5.3, find the probability of event B that x, the number of acceptable circuits, equals y. So it means that uh, B uh, is an event, is an event uh, where x is equal to y. So for all those values, we have to. So we can uh, see that B if we intersect it with the, the sample square, the uh, range of x, y, so it will be all those values where x and y are same. So it will be 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So therefore, probability of b will be simply p x, y, 0, 0, plus p x, y, 1, 1, uh, plus probability of p x y 2 2 so from the previous example if we see that uh, these values will be 0 0.01 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.81 so that will be 0 0.91 so let's uh, look at another example it is uh, quiz uh, 5.2 and it says that uh, the joint pmf uh, P, Q, G uh, for random variables Q and G is given in the following table. So calculate the following probabilities. So for the first one, we see that it says that find the probability of Q is equal to 0. It simply means that for Q equals to 0 uh, for all the values of G. So for all the values of G where Q is equal to 0. If we see here, if we uh, look from the table that's quite uh, straightforward uh, it would be simply by adding all the values of uh, these probabilities for which q is equal to 0 and g gets the value uh, 0 1 2 and 3 so uh, we can write it here as uh, uh, in terms of uh, q g 0 1 plus p q g 0 uh, uh, sorry, 0, 0, 0, 1 plus P, Q, G, uh, 0, 2 uh, plus P, Q, G, 0, 3. So, just from the table, if we put these values, it is 0 0.06 plus 0 0.18 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.12. So, that sums up to be 0.6 so similarly uh, for b part it says that probability of uh, q is equal to g so all those uh, uh, events uh, all those uh, uh, outcomes for which q is equal to g so we can see that q g so that will be uh, 0 0 plus q g uh, it would be 1 1 plus probability q G, it is a uh, three, uh, sorry two two. So, writing these values from the table, so it would be zero 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 point zero six plus uh, one one is uh, zero point uh, one two. Uh, sorry, there is a mistake. So there there is no two uh, for Q is only defined for zero one. So obviously these values will not be here. So that would be simply these two values. So uh, that would be the sum of these 0 0.018. And the third part says that uh, probabilities of all the values of G for which uh, G is greater than 1. So for all 
g is uh, greater than 1. So it simply means that uh, g is equal to 2 to 3 and uh, q is equal to q is equal to uh, 0 to 1 uh, p q g q g so uh, we can see that uh, for g is equal to 2 and uh, uh, q is equal to for all means uh, it would be simply p q g so q 0 g 2 plus p q g q 0 and g 3 uh, plus p q g q is uh, 1 g is 2 plus p q g q is 1 and g is 3 so uh, from the table we can write down these 0 point uh, uh, 0 0.24 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.08 so that would be 0 0.6 and uh, the last part says that uh, find the probability for which g is greater than q uh, probability for g is greater than q so for g is greater than q we can see that q is equal to 0 to 1 and q uh, g is equal to q plus 1 2 3 p q g q g so uh, so that uh, values will be p q g so we have to look for uh, g is greater than q so we just look in the table so we will take all the values for which uh, uh, g is greater than uh, g is greater than q so that would be uh, sorry, uh, 0, q is 0 and g is 1 plus p, q, g uh, for which uh, q is 0 and g is 2, p, q, g, q is 0 and g is 3 plus, plus p, q, g, sorry. Uh, for which uh, now q is uh, 1 so g should be greater than 1 so it would be uh, 1 comma 2 plus p q g 1 comma 3 so uh, we can write these values from the table so that would be 0 0.18 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.08 so that sums up to be 0 0.78 so that's uh, quite simple uh, the, these are just uh, showing that we have uh, to work only for uh, the two random variables so we uh, now just one important thing that i will uh, 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 let you know that uh, when we have uh, two random variables so we are working in a plane while when we had uh, only one random variable so uh, we were working on a line so that uh, obviously that's increase in dimension and the increase in dimension gives us the uh, more information more information about the system uh, okay so uh, let's uh, look at now a very small topic uh, which is a uh, marginal PMF. So the marginal PMF is uh, defined as uh, for discrete random variables, <coughs> the marginal PMFs PX of X and P y of y which we have already seen how to find them are probability models for the 
individual random variables x and y but remember that uh, they do not they do not provide a complete probability model model for the pair x y so uh, we can define them mathematically as p x of x is summation y that belongs to the range of y p x y x comma y and similarly the marginal pmf of y will be summation over the range of x of the joint pmf so uh, let's uh, look at an example so i have copied it uh, from the book it says that uh, in example 5.3 we found x and y have the joint pmf uh, shown in this uh, table find the marginal pmfs of the random variables x and y so uh, so it's uh, quite easy to find the marginal pmfs so what uh, uh, i will let you know uh, that's a quite straightforward method so that would be for x equal to 0 sum up all the values for y is equal to 0 for y is equal to 0 1 and 2 so it is 0 0.01 and here it would be 0 0.18 and it would be 0 0.81 similarly add all the values of these probabilities uh, for y is equal to 0 and x could be 0 1 2 so this is 0 0.10 0 0.09 and 0 0.81 obviously we know that that's uh, sum up to be 1 so that would uh, be now quite easy uh, to write p x of x would be uh, simply if we just uh, write this formula so that y belongs to the range of y so here the range of y is 0 1 2 and uh, uh, over the joint pmf so that would be straightforward so it means that uh, we have to all the values uh, we have to add all the values uh, for them so p uh, x of x uh, would be simply uh, so x could be because uh, either 0 1 2 so for x equal to 0 and for all values of y it is uh, 0 0.01 for x equal to 0 and uh, for x equal to 1 uh, if for all and for all values of y it is 0 0.18 so uh, sorry uh, it is x equal to 1 and uh, for x equal to 2 it is uh, 0 0.81 for x equal to 2 and 0 otherwise similarly uh, we can write the pmf of marginal pmf of y py of y will be simply summation x that belongs to the range of x p x y x comma y so p y of y would be then so y could be 0 for y is equal to 0 and all values of x sum up them so it is 0 0.10 for y is equal to 0 and it is uh, 0 0.09 for y is equal to 1 and it is uh, 0 0.81 for y is equal to 2 0 otherwise so that's uh, quite easy that we already have done but uh, just to see here uh, let's uh, uh, look at another example so i have got it from the book uh, so again that we will be going to do the same process with them so for h is equal to minus 1 
we will uh, so I'll just read the question first so it says that the probability mass function for two random variables h and t is given and in the form find the marginal pmfs so it would be for h is equal to minus one and for b is equal to zero two and four and we will add up their probabilities that will sum up 2.6 and similarly we will do for each row and 0 0.2 and for each column 0 0.5 0 0.3 obviously they should sum up to one now we can easily write down the p h of say h first so for h is equal to minus one and for all values of b's it is 0 0.6 for h is equal to minus one and for h is equal to zero and for all values of b it is 0 0.2 and for h is equal to one and for all values of b their summation is 0 0.2 for h is equal to one and zero otherwise similarly we can write the pmf of b so for b is equal to 0 and for all values of h my h of minus 1 0 and 1 so we will add them it is 0 0.2 for b is equal to 0 and uh, 0 0.5 for b is equal to 2 similarly uh, for b is equal to 4 it is 0 0.3 0 0.3 for b is equal to 4 0 otherwise So this is how we can find out the uh, joint, uh, uh, the marginal PMFs from the, uh, from the joint PMF. So I hope you have understood everything. So stay blessed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.